And now to a story about black female warriors. They were enslaved people who made their mark in history but were long overlooked. Dr. Rebecca Hall, an activist, educator, and herself the granddaughter of enslaved people, uncovers their legacy in her new book, Wake, The Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolts. It's an illustrated history and also a personal memoir. Dr. Hall, it's a pleasure to speak with you tonight. Oh, it's an honor to be here. Thanks for, thanks for having me. So before we dive into your research, let's talk about the unusual graphic structure of your book. Why did you choose comic strip artwork in order to tell this history? Yeah, well, the graphic um, novel medium is very powerful. Um, I was very moved by um, graphic memoirs uh, that have been, you know, previous graphic memoirs. Um, there's something that you can do in, in this medium that can't be achieved in, you know, in just regular text or even in, in film. The, the relationship between, there's a complex relationship between past and present in this book, and th this medium is uniquely suited to that. And let's talk more about these women warriors. You find in your research that the higher number of women on a slave ship, the greater the odds of a revolt. I think that's very interesting. How do you explain that and the role of women in the slave-led revolts that you studied? Yeah. So um, this uh, finding was actually done by historians uh, who had worked on the Atlantic slave trade for decades and compiled a, a massive database of over 35,000 slave ship voyages. Um, and uh, once they had that database, they, you know, you could query it, and, and they queried it and found that there were revolts on one in 10 ships, which surprised everyone, because revolts on slave ships tended to be kind of like a suicide, an act of suicide. And then, then, then when they asked themselves, like, you know, queried the database and asked, well, what's the difference between the ships that had revolts um, versus the ships that didn't have revolts? The only thing that was statistically different was that the more women on the ship the more likely to be a revolt. And the historians who did this at the time sort of dismissed this and said, well, this must be a fluke because we know that women weren't involved in this type of resistance. But I, I went and looked at the actual captain ship's logs um, on, on these ships and, you know, found uh, women involved in revolt. And the reason why is because, you know, once a, once the, a ship left the coast of West Africa, women were brought uh, on deck and unchained. So they had greater mobility, and it's also where, where the weapons were kept. Um, and, you know, this, this is, uh, you know, this is like a regulated business practice. They, this was actually how um, the, 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 the slave trade was regulated, and this is how people were instructed to operate their business. So the women were unfettered and therefore had more opportunity to revolt, it sounds like. And, and there, of course, have been numerous books about slavery and resistance. So why do you think that these women's stories stayed hidden for so long? Yeah, you know, that's a complex question. But I think, um, I think it's important for people to understand that history is always written in a context, right? There's, there's a social and political context, and then history is also... Uh, written in conversation with other historians. So, you know, the social and political context, you know, for a long time, there was no history written about slave resistance at all in this country because the historians writing it insisted that there, there was no resistance and that slavery was just fine. In order to uncover this history, you began your research in urban areas like New York City. So often we hear about uh, the history of slavery in the South. So I'm curious what made you decide to, to focus on Northern slavery and what you found? Well, a couple things. I, I, I grew up in New York City, and um, also um, I was focusing on, you know, early British America, the you know, early, early 1700s. And I also wanted to intervene in this idea that slavery was this sort of very regional, deep south, you know, antebellum, gone with the wind plantation system. And really so to illustrate that this is something that was you know, throughout what would become the United States. And that slavery was also a very much of an urban phenomenon. And it's so important to, to highlight the role of, of slavery in New York City because it was very formative in, in the creation of the city. Um, and, you know, its, it's base, uh, creation of its base as a, um, the, you know, financial capital of the United States, uh, you know, perhaps, perhaps the, the world. Um, so, yeah. 
And lastly, as a historian and the granddaughter of enslaved people, what lasting impact do you hope that your readers and of your book will, will take away, and, and also the historical record? Yeah, well, I mean, what I really hope that uh, this country, that we start to become able to come to terms with the legacy of slavery, um, and, and I, I try to address that in my book, um, I want people to be able to um, understand uh, more about the institution, understand how uh, people of African descent fought and resisted slavery every step of the way, um, and for us to understand and engage with some kind of process of, of truth and reconciliation about the legacy of slavery and its impact on us um, today. Dr. Rebecca Hall, we thank you so much. Wake, The Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolts is available wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.